Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts 11 from verse 19. We'll begin from there. The Antioch expose. Okay. The Bible says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and at Antioch and preaching the word to none but and to the Jews only. You understand? The Bible says that there are men who scattered after the persecution of Stephen. They didn't scatter for anything. They didn't scatter for anything, but they scattered because of the persecution of Stephen. How many of you remember the Stephen story? Thank you very much. The Lord selects seven men full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom and they go to the distribution of food that the apostles in Jerusalem might give themselves wholly to prayer and the word. The scriptures tell us they selected seven men, Stephen, uh, Nicanor, Timon, there's a guy they call Nicholas the proselyte uh, from Antioch, etc., etc. Stephen goes out, starts to do miracles, signs and wonders, heals the sick, casts out devils, until he disturbs the whole city. After disturbing the whole city, the scriptures tell us they kill Stephen. Now, if you follow the memories of what actually transpires after that, you realize that almost all those guys were killed somehow. They almost were killed. Like the whole original 12 literally were almost killed, all of them. You get? For the sake? All because of the gospel. Now, there's a persecution that has come as Stephen is what? Killed. So certain men have scattered because they're preaching Christ. Okay? Let's continue. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Don't worry. These men are still on the Lord Jesus. Okay? They've not yet understood Paul's message. You understand? Remember Paul at Damascus? What is he preaching? Jesus Christ is Lord. Same thing. Barnabas, Jesus Christ is Lord. The preachers at conversion, Jesus Christ is Lord. James and John, Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. I'm coming. That's why there are some people who have some kind of yes, yes, you get? Some of them got it from there, or some of them probably have built a deeper line from there, but you see the picture. Jesus is Lord. Okay? These ends the Lord has also planned to work in Paul and is working in Paul. Okay? From conversion time to the time the guy is in Arabia seeking God and God revealing to him the message, the message, the message, the message of the grace coming to confide in Peter and James, who are them that were ahead of him in Jerusalem, he, he's getting it, you get? Let's continue. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Eh? They came at Antioch. Let's continue. And then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. At that particular point, the Barnabas is being sent. Let's continue. When he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with the purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Let's continue. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord because of the exhortations of Barnabas. Let's continue. Now, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek for Saul. You see, Jerusalem has sent who? Barnabas. After Jerusalem sends Barnabas, it says, aha. Uh -huh. Now, remember, by the time you start to read about the Antioch experiences, you're talking of a time period beyond 37 AD. And if you're talking about 37 AD, we know Saul at that point is converted to Paul. We know very clearly that the man has gotten to the Arabia lines. He has understood the grace message. Now we are almost toward his first missionary journey. Are we together? So the period that I'm now I'm narrating is from about 41 AD to about 44, 45 AD. Okay? Are we together with the Z? 
Eh? Then departed Barnabas to, start, to Tarsus to seek Saul. What has that Adrias done? When the guys at Jerusalem send him to go and preach this chief thing, he preaches, and after that he said, no, let me go and bring this guy. Okay? Let's continue. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the lines of Christianity in Antioch began by the teachings of Paul and Barnabas, not Peter, not James, not John. Do you see that there is some special at Antioch? Do you understand that there is some special at Antioch? They began to teach them at at what? Antioch. Let's continue. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem, from Antioch. Some of you know the experience. Message. And they found him and brought him back to Antioch, and they were there for a whole year, meeting with the church and teaching a lot of people. It was in the Antioch that the disciples for the first time came or were called to be Christians. Next line. Now, it was about this same time that some prophets came to Antioch from Jerusalem. There is a line of guys in Jerusalem. Next line. And one of them named Agabus stood up one day and prompted by the spirit warned that a severe famine was about to devastate the country. The famine eventually came during the rule of Claudius. So you remember that I was telling you about Claudius? You remember that I talked to you about Claudius? Now Claudius comes in about 45, okay, AD. Now I think we're still in the periods of um, Caesar. I think, I think Aretas and Caesar between that time. Let's continue. Uh huh. So the disciples decided the, the disciples decided that each of them would send whatever they could to their fellow Christians in Judea to help. Some of you know what's in Judea. You remember the teachings we've been having about Judea experiences. Let's continue. So they sent Barnabas and Saul to deliver the collection of the leaders in to the leaders in Jerusalem. Uh huh. Next line. That's when the King Herod got it into his head to go after some of the church of the members. Let's continue. And he murdered James and John's brother and blah, 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 and Mary's red blah, 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 the Jews, and we arrested. Later on, we see some experiences of killing. But most importantly, let's go to 13 verse 1. There's something I'm looking for. Now, the congregation in Antioch was blessed with a number of prophet preachers. Now, you see it has changed from prophets in Jerusalem to Antioch prophet preachers because there was much teaching. Okay? And the grace message then is being preached. And teachers as Barnabas, Simeon, nicknamed Niger, Lucius, Cyrenian, Menean, and an advisor to the ruler of Herod. So, let's continue. And one day, as they were worshipping God, they were also fasting as they waited for God. The Holy Spirit spoke to them and told them, take Barnabas and Saul and commission them for the work I have called them to do. Okay? So Paul and Barnabas' ministry was also commissioned in Antioch by the folk at Antioch. Let's continue. So they commissioned them. And in that sack of intensity and obedience of fasting and praying, they laid hands on their heads and sent them off. So, sent off their new assignment by the Holy Spirit. Barnabas and Saul went down to Seleucia and caught up a thief of Cyrus. Sorry, a ship. A ship of what? Of Cyprus. Now, look at this picture. Cyr uh, Saul and Barnabas, whom you might call Paul, have been given an open door to preach the gospel to Antioch. Okay? And when they were given a line and grace to preach the gospel at Antioch, we realize that the testimony now tells us the guys at Antioch, who were then leaders, who were prophet preachers, were somewhere praying and seeking the Lord. And the Spirit of God tells them, you know what, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work which I have, called them. That means the guys at Antioch agreed that there was something special on Paul. And there was something special on Barnabas. And it was true, Paul had met God, okay? But there's a reason as to why Paul needed the hand and commissioning at Antioch. That's one thing many Christians have failed to understand. Some of them, when the Lord meets them on a certain mountain, X, and then they get anointed, they have this attitude of no man called me, no man separated, I don't need any man, me I need the Holy Spirit. That's immaturity. That's immaturity. I'm giving you an example of a man who was filled by the Holy Spirit, commissioned by Ananias, his eyes were open. He doesn't waste any time. He's preaching gospels in Damascus and everywhere he is. I'm telling you of a man who has had a Arabian experience with the Lord. The Lord has revealed to him the gospel of the message. He has gone to Peter and Paul, the guys who are ahead. I mean Peter and James who are ahead of him because he respects that. Even though I have this chill line of revelation. There are certain people who went ahead of me. And I must 
owe them some explanation about what I'm saying. That's why he says, I went to see Peter, that we might compare notes in what the Lord had spoken to me. Okay? But we see consequences of later, how the Lord opens another door at Antioch. And Paul still goes at Antioch and finds men who are preachers, pastors, you understand? They've shared there for one year. Christianity is truly bad. But he still has the mind and, 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 and wisdom that there are certain people who have gone ahead of him. Okay? And as they fasted and prayed, the Bible says they were prompted by the Holy Spirit. You think the Spirit didn't know that Paul was set apart by God? You think the Spirit didn't know that Paul was called of God? You think the Spirit that didn't know that Paul was given the foundation and the grace to lay the new gospel, the testimony of the foundation? It tells you as a master builder, has given this grace to lay down the foundation of the gospel. He was a master builder. This is a master builder at work. You understand? He has just done one line over here in Antioch. Christianity has been birthed, but there are guys who are ahead of him and they are saying the Spirit of God has told them, lay hands on these guys and commission them for the work which I have, call them. And true, it is the scriptures tell you, they laid hands on Paul. Paul was humble enough to allow certain people to pray for him. Now, of course, not everyone assumes that position, so you don't think that you pray for every man of God. Am I clear also on that one? Don't just come out of the bro and tell Pastor Zach, the Lord, you, you actually submitted to him, but the Lord has told me to lay hands on you. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from. You must know the ranks and understand them and respect them. Of course, he probably might be like me or somebody. They can learn. You don't mind. But you understand their babies. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see. Let's continue and see whether there is something I can do there. Let's continue the Corinthian experiences. Uh-huh. And so they went to Seleucia and caught up a ship at Cyprus. I don't know whether I can skip there. There is something I wanted to show us, but uh, no, 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 no. Let's go to 43. So as the meeting broke up, a good many Jews and converts to Judaism went along with Paul and Barnabas, who urged them in the long conversations to stick with what they had started, this living in and by God's grace. You understand? So later on, as they continued to preach the gospel wherever they were going, okay, they found Jews that were Judistic, but had just been converted. Now, these Jews, when they hear this grace message, they get attached to the guys who are preaching it. What happens? They want to go with these guys everywhere. Okay? And these guys advise these guys, you know what? Just continue understanding and living in God's grace. Leave the law. Because Judas Judaism was just uttermost and sheer testimony of the law. Okay? Let's continue. And when the next Sabbath came around, practically the whole city showed up to hear the word. <laughs> Some of the Jews seeing the crowds went wild with jealousy and tore into Paul, contradicting everything he was saying. You see, making an aggressive. Do you see that all of these things are not new? I'm just trying to open your eyes to that history must repeat itself sometimes. Okay? Okay, Pastor Zach. Very amazing. He, he, he got a crowd, okay? And what is the crowd? Paul is preaching the grace. Or maybe some of you just want us to read through. Okay, let's go back. Such that some of you know where we are coming from. Let's begin from verse 14. Just to give you a recap. Okay, from Pada, the rest of them traveled on to Antioch. That means they come back to Antioch. In a certain group preaching, okay? And on the Sabbath day, they went to the meeting place and took their places. Okay, let's continue. After the reading of the scriptures, God's law and the prophets, the president of the meeting asked them, Friends, do you have anything you want to say? A word of encouragement, perhaps? They read the law. Paul has attended service in Antioch Pisidia. Okay? You see an experience. Let's continue. Now, Paul stood up and paused and took a deep breath and said, Fellow Israelites, listen to Paul, and friends of God, listen. God took a special interest in our ancestors, pulled our people who were beaten down in Egypt, in Egyptian exile, to their feet and led them out of there in a the grand style. Next line. He took good care of them for nearly 40 years in that God-forsaken wilderness, and then having wiped out seven enemies who stood in the way, gave them to the land of Canaan for their very own. Let's continue. A span in all about 450 years, up to the time of Samuel, the prophet, God provided judges to lead them, but then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, out of the tribe of Benjamin, after Saul had ruled 40 years. They don't know where he's going. Let's continue. God removed him from the office and put a king David in his place with this commendation. 
I have searched the land and found this David, son of Jesse. He's a man whose heart beats to my heart and a man who will do what I will tell him. By the way, I need to be clear. There's a difference between Antioch in Syria and Antioch of Pisidia. They're both Antiochs, but they're different. Okay? From out of David's descendants, God produced the Savior of Israel, Jesus, exactly as he promised. Next line. But only after John had thoroughly alerted the people to this arrival by preparing them for a total life change. As John was finishing up his work, he said, Did you think I was the one? No, I'm not the one. But the one who you've been waiting for all of these years is just around the corner, about to appear, and I'm about to disappear. Let's continue. Dear brothers and sisters, children of Abraham and friends of God, this message of salvation has been precisely targeted to you. The citizens and rulers of Jerusalem didn't recognize who he was and condemned him to death. Let's continue. They couldn't find a good reason but demanded that Pilate execute him anyway. They did just what the prophets said they would do, but had no idea they were following to the letter the script of the prophets, even though those same prophets are read every Sabbath in their meeting places. After they had done everything, the prophets said that they would do they took him down from the cross and buried him. Let's continue. And the God raised him from death, and there is no disputation to that. He appeared over and over again many times and places to those who had known him. Well in the Galilean years, and all these same people continue to give witness that he's still alive. Let's continue. And we're here today bringing you good news, the message that what God promised the fathers has come true for the children. For us, he raised Jesus exactly as described in the second psalm. My son, my very own son, today I celebrate you. Let's continue. When he raised him from the dead, he did it for good. No going back to that rot and decay for him. That's why Isaiah said, I'll give to all you David's guaranteed blessing. You see that? So Christ is a guarantee who doesn't have to die back again. He finished once and for all. Say amen. So also the psalmist prayer says, you'll never let your holy one see death's rot and decay. So you know why he quotes psalmist? That he shall never see, let his holy one see corruption. Neither he saw rot in hell. Jesus was not going to go back again in hell. Let's continue. So David, of course, having completed the work God set out for him, has been in the grave, dust and ashes a long time now. But the one God raised up, no dust and ashes for him. I want you to know, my very dear friends, that, that it is not on the account of this resurrected Jesus that the forgiveness of your sins can be promised. It cannot be promised on the fulfillment of the law. He's speaking to Jewish people, Judas. He's telling them that it's this testimony and this guy dying and resurrected that you're forgiven. The promise of forgiveness comes. The promise of forgiveness will not come because you obeyed the Ten Commandments, because you didn't steal, you didn't kill. The promise of forgiveness of sins can only come by the believing of this one man called Jesus Christ. On the account of his resurrection, the Bible says it's the forgiveness of your sin and that's where the promise can be. He promised, that means God promised, if you want to be forgiven, believe on Jesus Christ. Not the law. Believe on Jesus Christ. Not the obedience of the law. The obedience of the law cannot lead to the forgiveness of sins. The shed blood of Christ, his death and resurrection, is what leads to the forgiveness of sins. They don't understand. He's wearing them in their grace. Okay? Let's continue. He accomplishes, in those who believe, everything that the law of Moses could never make good on. You see, this is Paul. He's telling them, he fulfills everything in them. This is not now men obeying the Ten Commandments. This is Jesus Christ in men obeying the Ten Commandments. He fulfills in them what Moses could not do. What? Do. Now, Paul is shifting these men from their hard and hell and hardy line of trying to fulfill the Ten Commandments. And he's telling them, there is a guy who, if you believe, can enter inside you and fulfill. What goes with this man who has been religious to the letter all his life? And he has even earned accolades and chapters on him. Or your senior obe obedient person, apostle. Do you know those people? I thought some of you are not religious. Some of us were raised in religious churches. Muslim motion. <laughs> if you have been there, you raise your hand. If you guys think I'm lying, those hands can say I'm not. Praise the Lord. So you see a bunch of guys who are too... They have over ironed clothes.
receiving it. Touching him. That day you get a job. Just touch him. You, you get where I'm coming from. Now tell that man that all you've been doing is actually filthy rugs. There is something you're doing to him. Oh, in natural mukora. Superstar has been like this since he was a child. Remember, Gamaliel taught him that way. His Pharisee fathers were raised teaching him that way. He, he, what Paul went to to actually believe this message was harder than some of you. Because many of you don't even know the law. You don't understand the law. I can even ask you the Ten Commandments and you don't even know where they are. I can even tell you to recite the Ten Commandments and you don't know them. But some of you are still legal. You're amazing. You're amazing. To defend her. Now, he tells them that he accomplishes. Somebody say he accomplishes. In those who believe. Everything that the law of Moses could never make good on. And Paul continues to say. Moses could never make good on. But everyone, the Bible says, who believes in this raised up Jesus is declared good and right and whole before God. So, what makes you declared right before God? What makes you declared good before God? What makes you declared whole before God? So, you're whole, good and right because you believed. And then these men are telling you no. You're whole, good and right when you start to do whole, good and right. No. Believing precedes doing. You are what you do. You don't do to become. Doing to become means that you are a thief. You're trying to become straight. You get what I'm trying to tell you. Ah, not a thief. Walking in the life of not being a thief. Okay? Do you know why rehabilitation centers have failed to restore men besides the gospel? Because they call them Alcoholics Anonymous. They don't call them delivered of the Lord. They don't, they don't call them engineers. They don't call them prophets. They don't call them pastors. They call them Alcoholics Anonymous. You get what I'm trying to tell you? They are not Alcoholics Anonymous. No, they are prophets. The Lord calls the things that are not as though they Why? So it's the gospel that looks at you in those eyes and says you are the righteousness of God. Before you even do it, it, it regards you righteous because you believe on him who can make good what Moses could not good, make good by the law. Isn't that straightforward? Let's continue. He accomplishes, first wait. In those who believe everything that the law of Moses could never make good, but everyone who believes in this raised up Jesus is declared good, right, and whole before God. Imagine this man is preaching to legal people. So imagine what is in their hearts. Let's continue. Don't take this lightly. You don't want the prophet someone to describe you. Watch out, cynics. Look hard. Watch your world fall to pieces. I'm doing something right before your very own eyes that you won't believe. Though it's staring at you in the face. Let's continue. When the service was over, <laughs> Paul and Barnabas were invited back to preach against the next Sabbath. But that's not your presidia. That's not your presidia. They listen to something. And instead of, ah, no, 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 no. Can you guys come back? There's something you're preaching here. Why? Because Judaism taught us this one thing. There is one seventh creed of Judaism. One prophet called Moses. The best there was, the best there is, and the best shall come. And no other man is wiser than this Moses. We believe that the Christ is not even yet come. So the best prophet up to now, according to Judaism, is Moses. And some churches, even today in the dispensation where they believe Jesus Christ, still hold that creed so strong. They believe in Moses more than they do believe in Jesus. They preach more about sin than about Christ. Sin is so big in some churches than Christ is. Because if they don't preach about sin, their heads tell them that they won't get young people out of sin. But amazingly, the Bible is very clear that the knowledge of sin is the law. You tell a man, don't sleep around young people. Don't do sin. They'll do it. They'll do it. They'll do it. Because the knowledge of sin is Read it. It's the, it's the knowledge of sin is the law. 
the knowledge of sin is the law. The moment you want to bring sin in church, continue telling people what not to do. So, that's why for us we say, it is not what you do. You understand? Therefore, one, two, three, go. By the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Am I the one who wrote it? Am I the one who wrote it? No, it's Paul. So if by the law is the knowledge of sin, why am I preaching the law? If I preach the law, what am I doing? Ah, uh-huh. you say it grammatically. If I preach the law, what am I doing? I'm telling you about sin. I'm not telling you about God. Because Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. So, that's why when Paul wanted to clear his line, he says, when I was a minister, you, I sought to know nothing, save Christ dead and resurrected. He didn't mention Moses. He knows why he didn't mention Moses. Because the scripture says in Corinthians that every time Moses is read, this veil covers their eyes. Every time the law is read, this veil, there is a veil of darkness that covers the understanding and apprehension of the things of the Spirit every time you read the law. Some people don't understand why the scripture said that the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The letter killeth. If you want to kill men, start telling them don't steal, don't kill, you kill them. Second Corinthians, thank you. Let's open there. Are you there? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's begin from um, 5. Not that we are. One, two, three, go. Not that we are. Uh-huh. As of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. Hey, first wait. You know some of you just read it like you understand it. Do you know the constant liberty in understanding that you will never have a sufficient in any demonstration line of the Spirit? Why do you think some men demonstrate sometimes and sometimes they cannot even when they want to? Because they don't understand how free they are to demonstrate outside their sufficiency. They think that it is all about what they have done. That is why they are still on prayer mountains looking for the anointing. Yet some of us sit in the bank and load it. We just load. Listen, I know what is the anointing. I know how. I know how. I know. You see, let me tell you something. The, the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay? And because the Holy Spirit is a person, if you never understand Him, you can never flow with Him. Because He has a certain paradox. Of leading you because he's a spirit for as many as are led by the spirit of God so are they the children of God okay but the paradox that only leads to your service because he leads you to serve your occasion now many people don't understand that he just wants to uphold you to a place where the mind of Christ is so perfected to the demonstration of what can only be obvious the spirit working in you and because of those lines of perfection that man cannot err to dissipate the spirit. The lines of dissipating the spirit, you realize, ever shall always be by men who never apprehend the true testimony of his grace. Because one, grace is what saves you before you even know it, right? Grace is what worked in you to enable you to influence the divine influence. That's why they call grace divine influence on a man. It's just a divine influence. Already, the fact that I'm standing in the anointing, I didn't call it. You understand? Oh, I could have called it, but by choice, it man told me. If the Old Testament tells the man, that then when you shall be there, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, and you shall prophesy, and you shall turn into another man, and whatsoever occasion serves you, that you shall do. Why? Because it shall be with you. Because at that particular point, he ceases to lead you. He has led you to a place of the unction to stir up in your spirit. When the unction stirs up in your spirit, he tells you at that particular point, whatever occasion serves you do, for I shall be with you. Because that when, when that man gets to that line of occasion, you realize that his mind is too realigned to truth and eternity. That he doesn't function to his occasion, but really the mind of Christ on occasion. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. The Spirit of God can't lead you to that liberty and you serve your own. When you see men dissipate the Holy Spirit, serving their own on occasion as given, realize that those men have not understood the full lines of the grace. And that's why many legal people can't demonstrate. 
It's very hard to find those legal people. You see them. They're morally just they are. They can't make open blind eyes. They can't make the lame walk. They can't raise the dead. They're religious. Can't raise the dead. Can't open blind eyes. Can't heal the sick. They don't have an answer. Because the more religious you are, the more you are tied to things that... Because, you see, what religion does is, and probably the law, is it tries to drop patterns in liberties. God has not led us to function in patterns in the liberties. He has led us to function patterns before the liberties. When the liberties come, we don't pattern. We flow. It's different. When the liberties of the spirit come, we don't pattern. We flow. We don't pattern. We flow. The patterns are only to the liberties. But when the liberties come in, we don't pattern. The occasion serves you. But it's sure that that occasion can't serve you. And the mind of God is not dispensed enough to function by divine purpose. That is why the only way you can dissipate the Spirit of God in the liberties of the Spirit is when you have not understood the grace. Why? Because the grace is what explains to you that already when occasion serves you, sufficiency wasn't of you. Simple. But when you get into these liberties and you still think of a sufficiency of you, do you know what happens? You start to see men demonstrate the flesh in spiritual things. Have you been in demonstrations which became fleshy? To a point where you see the spirit, it's true. But there's also a certain line of the flesh that just doesn't seem to coincide with the things of the spirit. Oh, have you been to a meeting and a man demonstrated and instead of feeling blessed, you felt like there was something wrong about this whole thing. Yes, it's demonstration, but there's something wrong about it. It has shifted to something else. Because many men dissipate the spirit enough to even provide for the flesh in the lines of their demonstrations. And for such men you realize they can never walk in the grace of ministering to souls and spirits. They will walk in the graces of impacting minds. They can touch your life but they can't change it. See, you can lay hands on me and I fall down and get up. And another man comes and lays a hand on me. And my whole life changes. I mean, I've seen meetings where men are, every time they're chasing demons out of them. But these men, are, they're still broke. They're still beggarly. Their marriages have still failed. Their relationships, they're still funny. Okay? Have you been in meetings where they're delivering men every day? But these men seem to get bound every other day. Yes, they're casting out. They're falling. They're screaming. They're always on television screaming. Let me tell you. That's why I told you. Some of you, when you had just come, you had a lot of demons on you. You remember the hard work we went through. That's why you should love us. Have you ever been in meetings where you're chasing you just flow in what is already finished. You can't have a demon on you when you submitted to me. You can't. Chigana. You try. You just say, huh? Can we in Gizemo Jacolaba? Let me tell you. I branded my spirit a long time ago to determine the men who submit to me. I branded it. I branded it. There are certain things that cannot happen to you because you submit to grace with Why? Because years before I understood a certain secret in the spirit, I spoke these things way before they came to pass. Before some of you even came to this church. Many years ago while I was still a guy at three, third year, just graduation, there are things I used to speak every night. My own can fail. My own can be sick. My own can die. My own can be weak. My own can be disadvantaged. They can't be bewitched. They, you see, I spoke this thing. I spoke this thing. Now I live in the confirmation of what has affirmed those years ago. Somebody in church disappeared some time back. And somebody called me and said, a church member has disappeared. I said, my church member? Yes, as on Ginger Road. Are they submitted to me? They said, yes. I told them, don't worry, tomorrow morning they'll appear. Right. Kumanga wangi, a wange tabula. Next day they find them. Next day they find them. Because that's who we are. That's who we are. 
When I say my own can't be broke, I mean my own can't be broke. They just can't be broke. And when I'm preaching that gospel, I know because I realize that the witnesses in church was this simple. We never let the expectations of men, even though he told them he shall give them an expected end. But many times when he says, I have good plans to make you prosper, not to harm you, that, that plan to give you a future and that hope, that expected end. When the Bible spoke of the expected end, I realized that our lines as shepherds in the gospel was to draw expectations in the hearts of men. Because many men were not naturally born noble. They were not naturally born wise. Not many of you are not noble. You are not of wise birth. But it shows the foolish things that he might shame the wise. So there were likeness of men who were not noble. They did not and were not born with the understanding of the greatness that was within them. But the gospel we had to preach was to also draw a certain line of expectation. That's why churches are broke because of their pastors. Churches are sick because of their pastors. Marriages are failing because of pastors. Don't lie to yourself. We own the responsibility. He tells us, you teachers, take heed for your teaching, for you have much more judgments than these guys you teach. We know the responsibility of life. So when I wake up in the morning and I tell you you are rich, God shall provide according to his riches in glory. And I speak of houses you never built, vineyards you never planted. I mean vineyards you never planted. I mean monies you never made. Okay, they will tell you you reap what you sow. Some people don't know that even the word is sown because it's the seed. Look at 11, the parable is that the seed is the word. If a man can speak, the Bible says he can be perfected in his speech. That man can breathe on his whole body because a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. We created trees of life. A guy the other day came and told me, yesterday in fact, he was broke, he had borrowed a lot of money, and he was indebted. Are you hearing me? He comes to this gospel, and one time he hears me teach how to be fool. And then he takes his ATM in the machine and puts it in, and it is negative 70,000. When he saw negative 70,000, because it's my kind, he said, I thank you for the 70 million, my God. <laughs> 70 million. He went away. Next day he comes back. Negative 70,000. Oh, I It's still 70 million. Hallelujah. Oh, I am so rich. I am so rich. I am so rich. He went back. Third time. Negative 70,000. God, I thank you. I am still rich. The next time I'm coming back to withdraw some of that, I need to pay off some money. Because it is 70 million. 70 million. 70 million. 70 million. First day, he gets the same ATM, puts it in. It doesn't give him any amount. It asks him, How much do you want? He puts in 1 million. Please receive cash, and take your ATM, and don't leave your receipt back. Thank you because it is 70 million. Now it is 69. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? My kind can get money off an APM. That is negative 70. You can do all things. Do Christ to strengthen you. I wired my kind that way. Get on Salo Kolesi. Se te tu da. Trina de tu ava. Yo wa funga wa tu tama se. Bale kanso kere ko bale wa fu hu tama. Buku yimpaya ne buku kadia ne wa fu ne ne wa fu yo mu piku ma. Tell your neighbor I'm rich. Tell him I am rich. Don't try this at home except if you're my kind. <laughs> Hallelujah. The sufficiency is not of us. Let's go back. But the sufficiency is of God. The sufficiency is of God. 
So, who? One, two, three, go. <laughs> Made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Amplified. Uh -huh. One, two, three, go. It is He who has qualified us, making us to be fit and worthy and sufficient as ministers and dispensers of the new covenant of salvation through Christ, not ministers of the letter of the legally written code, but of the Spirit. For that code, which is the law, kills, but the Holy Spirit makes alive. What is so hard for you to understand there? A or B? Both of them are understandable. There is a law, and there is a spirit. And the law called of the letter kills. But the line of the spirit giveth life. Let's continue. Probably in the Amplified. I read something there. Uh -huh. Now, if the dispensation of death engraved in the letters on stone, the ministration of the law, was inaugurated with such glory and splendor that the Israelites Musame, were not able to look steadfastly at the face of Moses because of this brilliance. A glory that was to pass away. Next slide. Why should not the dispensation of the Spirit, this spiritual ministry, whose task is to cause men, cause men, cause men, cause men to obtain and be governed by the Holy Spirit, be attended with much greater and more splendid glory. Why shouldn't it? Make a version of this particular verse. Uh -huh. How much more dazzling than the government of the living spirit? Simply put, if men of the letter could dazzle, you are more than dazzling. If men of the letter are wise, you are more than wise. If men of the letter are amusing, you are more than amusing. If men of the letters are rich, how much more you? If men of the letters do marriage, for you, you will teach marriage. How much more? <laughs> you know, when I look at a man under the law, raise three million people, I say, ah, how much more grace will we got? Because if a man under the law can wire this, what about me? <laughs> Do you see what I'm seeing? Oh, you're still low. Pharisee. Do you see what I'm seeing? Sadducee. Listen. Now, do you realize, and this is what you're going to see, simply put, this generation that has understood the grace message, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. A man will become chief justice and he dies such that they put you there. Watch it. A man will be forced to be president huh? and he dies in his first year. Watch your Yingirewa or Marilisa. I said, this, this thing is too big. It's too big. That's why I'm a too good deco. Tell your name I'm a too good deco. Because look, 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 we understand the message. We carry the anointing. We carry the glory. We are wise. We are healthy. Church in Akuta. Muna wa tukena kufancha. Fetu fegre bi accident bi abu. Nara! Tuja kubabara. Mwen chanele ero. You understand? We are going to heal the sweet, open blind eyes, raise the dead, change the government, switch the army, uplift the education system, change the political lines. Go, ah! Do you understand? Because imagine men who have a more understanding covenant that makes them dazzle. Now, you're walking dazzling. You speak dazzling. You wake up dazzling. You understand? How can a man leave you? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Hoyaka. That's why no woman under the grace can beat you to the door. Petrissa Woka. Those little ones are the ones because their glory faded. 
at you even when you're 90. You still have the joy. If you're a man, claim it for your wife. Mr. Karaoke, say amen. She's 80. How much did she do down? Stop up like this. How did you use it? It is called grace. Unmerited favor. Watch us at a hundred. Some of us will start growing gray hair at a hundred. Chinana to Chariba Vubuka. Kaiwa. Eight days. You're walking like. Eight years old. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Eight days. Yes, Lord, yes, Yes, Lord, yes. How can an eight-year-old old man jump like this? That's sufficiency. It's not of us. It's of God. That is why you grow younger and uh, I speak it in your life. And if you have been having a body that is out of order, I put you in order in the name of Jesus. If you must lose weight, I release the anointing to lose weight. In Jesus' name. Two words. Next slide. If the government, one, two, three, go. If the government of condemnation was impressive, how about this government of affirmation? How about this one? How about this one? If the thing that used to condemn you had impression, <laughs> guys can even uplift you, keep your babies and girls. What about this one? Now do you understand why it's possible to fly and walk on water? Tebarina chase. Let's continue. Tebarina. Aha. Bright as that old government was, it would look down right there alongside this one. Uh-uh. Give me the Amplified. I think some people should understand this in the Amplified. Give me the Amplified. Uh-huh. Indeed, in view of this fact, that what once had splendor, the glory of the law, in the face of Moses, has come to no splendor at all. Because of the overwhelming glory that exceeds and excels it. The glory of the gospel in the face of Jesus. This one has exceeded the other one has looked dull. It has looked dull. So I look at some ministries which are so big and I see they're dull. I look at some ministries, one more woman of God, which are so big and I look at them and say, hey, she's dull. <laughs> Let's continue. For if that which was but passing and fade away came with splendor, how much more must that which remains and is permanent and abides in glory and splendor? So does the thing on you leave? Change the remove. Does the anointing on you leave? Next line. Since we have such glorious hope, also you say I also have it. And joyful, confident expectation. We speak very and and this Chigospo, this Chigospo can get a university kid to say, Nenda Gulahama next week. Nga tatide. Nga tatide. Nga tagami ha. Sente nga sitawa, webe wena swara. Ha, akala wakas naga. Nenda, I mean, how can a man go to an ATM overdrawn by 70,000 and expect money? How? Why don't you get money that way? Why are you sweating? <laughs> Come on, I'm a banker. I know how it works. I know how it works. It was mistakenly posted. Reconciliation is done on a daily basis for every ATM. I've done banking. I've reconciled ATMs against the general ledgers. ATM reconciliations are done daily. And if the ATM reconciliations are done and there's a missing line and link, 
There is a line of going back to the transaction journals of the ATM, printed out, compared against the statements of those individuals to see whether they actually withdrew money that existed or not. They know you within a day or two. This is Pastor Mas, the man is eating it. Some of you should understand what I'm talking about. You, you see, if you're a banker, you understand. If you're not, you might think it's just obvious. Now, somebody will say, he's telling young people not to work. Yes, I'm telling young people to believe. <laughs> what about work? Let them work, but let them work believing. <laughs> do I work? Yes, I do, but believing. <laughs> do you think the millions the bank pays me can be compared to the projects I do every day? You have to know me to understand Grace Rubega very well. He just doesn't talk too much. But the man has. Once again, now, do you think I can also go back and say, Obama Tusa Suladi? Obama Tusa Suladi? Because my sufficiency is not of a bank account. No. I can just rub a bar. Put your name there. Shatala. Mandere Bata Raka. Put on the shoe you want to put on, sister. Drive the car you want to drive. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory, not your salary. She never took that sister. And so she did much of clothes and to go with him. Why not to call it? Let that. Now we got God singing about security. Security. Go out to him. We got God singing about it. What we have in Uganda? We have to take a move to go with him. You understand where I'm coming from? So we freely speak. We freely speak. We speak free. Now, if you find a radical grace guy speaking silly things, Mutegeri, he's not in your class. So, you understand? Let them just get used to your language. But you don't provide for their unbelief. Some of you have realized ever since you started to hear this message, you get irritated around negative parents and people. Face away. So what is it? Face away. Face away. Face away. Face away. Face away. Face away. You feel like you want to step on them? Talk over you. You get this. Oh, the economy, the system. I don't know what to do. You know that. Oh, can you do it? Really? One time I was sitting next to a certain old man. He advised me. You know, he starts small. You get a one-room house, you build a one-bedroom house, and the Lord builds you there. I wanted to get him. <laughs> but because of him, I said, mm, mm, mm. After he finished speaking, I got a rubber. <laughs> I started writing again. Mansion. 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 Now, na- now, na- I got tired of negative talk. And when I'm around people who speak negative, my face changes a bit. We can't do it. How can we? No, 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 no. Let the weak say I am. Let the blind say I can. That's what the Lord has done. Oh, hello, hello, pastor, hey, hey, electricity, pastor, the land, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, you know all things. You have an action from on high. You know all things. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But the Bible says you know who is true. Go back at Honda. That is why in the time when the economy is so bad, and people, that's why, when they say economy is gone, almost turn a movie, start to look for things to buy. Kwanga abo katibabu. Gokula. Hey, you don't understand what I'm saying. Now when they say, Nange, if you can tell a kazibu, people are not buying things, you now can buy. Because it's an opportunity for you to buy things cheaper. You have the money. You know me, I buy in the worst time. Kastaba can go avu, hova avu, hova avu, buy a, I come in, kwa anze mugaka. Anze mugaka, we sigule eme ngulati. The wealth of the wicked. He stored up for the just. But what together? Now, only a chula lula da. You have without money, you can buy. Season na biogera, ya biogera. You have without money, you can buy. Do you know what that means? To a guy who is sen, senly sensitive, we are some of the zoo. Nanga manti, 
without money come and buy even without hemu kama hiyo unaona yani gambe make enough money to buy mute si he says without money come and buy now why should i wait for my brother to send me money to buy some of you now tomorrow morning you should be going to bonds as early as 7 am Mr. Barasa sells cars. You go. He tell him I want a car. You understand? You just go. Don't ask how. Ah, genda. You want my school? Go to a shop. Early morning, seven. If that day the money doesn't come, tell him, ay, 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 God. I thank you because you didn't want me to buy cheaper clothes. <laughs> We did this thing. Morning, we are called. It worked. We have been worked. I am what men look at. Tell your neighbor I'm what men look at. And believe Jesus is alive. I'm, I'm the testimony of the word. Tell your neighbor I am the word in flesh. Why would the men tell Paul to come back? Ah, no, and yeah, you know. You know them. We've removed the laws that make you make money. and we put the one who makes money in you why won't you come back for more now do you understand why even our church will be big not because you are preaching a false doctrine no. the truth makes men free let's continue with our cast story in corinthians uh huh when the service was paul and barnabas were to preach again like many great preachers they always call us back they always They always. Me yeah, I know why they do. It is irresistible. Get my someone called the irresistible grace. <laughs> who, who has had it? Siri chiringa njaga. Lokwa kati kwet ogenda temu miracle challenge. Ogenda ogenzi kola miracle. The next leg what? As the meeting broke up, a good many Jews and converts to Judaism went along with Paul and Barnabas. You see, went along. You know the meaning of went along? They started joining Paul. Bako yebiri, bage man tuko yen, tuko yetika. Now I'm seeing it's a guy in the morning was living even day brushed. He just like man tuko yetika. Tabi ma gai ma tika kai tindi. Tindi to wadi tikola. Paul I need tikola. Because it is free simple but it is working. It is getting a guy out of something without struggling. But do you realize the effect of this thing? Last Monday we had close to 2000 people in Makere. Why? Why are they coming? Bavawa. Have you ever seen it in the history of Makere? Ever in the history. What men are planning for a whole year in Makere? For us we do it on Monday. One Monday, a normal Monday. How do you ask yourself? Do you think it's the devil doing this? He must be mistaken. Siba nyumira. You know some people say, you see, now preach like one time I found a Karibo guy say, the Jacob in Nigeria, mpaka mwenye mna hapa mkanisa, naenda sija kusiri kila chini, nja kuchogera, they are stupid. Look at what brings Paul back in the meeting. Ah, uh-uh, the dead man of the Bible. Look what brought back Paul in the meeting. He preached one who could make a man walk out of sin. He didn't preach to a man to walk out of sin. He didn't preach to a man to try to be rich. No. He preached to a man who can make him rich. He didn't tell a man to live out of one No. He preached to a man who could enter you and you can't smoke and you can come. But what about the life you are could take? That's all right. That even when you're in the valley of decision. I say get ngakaa kusanga murumu roka tunya kutulizi wote nikagana nikagana ugamba eh njagala nekagani 
kuba nga wali wo muri ataka sobola kosi mine mtu mino biko la banani i don't know why these guys don't understand so next day the sabbath the meeting broke up and many guys started to follow Paul along who argued them in the long conversations to stick with what they had started this living in and by god's grace so you see the message had started to kuria let's continue now when the next sabbath came around practically the whole city to hear the word of god now some of the jews seen the crowd <laughs> they went wild with jealousy and they tore into paul contradicting everything he was saying making an ugly scene all the things people have done to us same things in makere they say Mu, we are telling young people to sleep around they say musimanya i have rooms in africa where i take girls to a boat in red grace now that one we don't even argue whether i do or i don't this this anointing this anointing you understand this anointing i respect it too much to even think can it what am i got to get there kati it's not even is it true it's not true huh? spiritual things is spiritual things go sabo kama kubulile tocho gera naku they said all kinds of things but the more they say people continued what because people come for the word and it works has to get gama mina uh uh-huh, next verse <laughs> but Paul and Barnabas didn't back down they didn't what back down standing their ground they said it was required that God's word be spoken first of all in Afro stone to Chamba go to Nkumba and Mukono but seeing that you want no part of it you've made it quite clear that you have no taste or inclination for eternal life the door is open to all the outsiders and we are on our way through it there are more people outside mama mchiganya fatuba no nyebwero there is a guy who just wants to know god loves him and he shed his blood they, that guy is there guy you can even fight for me next slide now following us being what god commanded when he said i've set you up as a light to all nations you will proclaim salvation to the four winds and seven seas next slide Now when the non-Jews outsiders had this they could hardly believe their good fortune you understand mwana munga mondi cult na yego luko chikolera you know this thing is so funny for them they couldn't believe their what because if you remember very well the Jews were not even praying with gentiles that's why i told you i can understand a legal Jew but i don't understand a Ugandan legal because according to jewish culture even you don't know, understand according to jewish culture you were not even supposed to pray in the same church with jews this thing gave you access and you're refusing it and i see a man a black man with a judistic cloth it they look too funny <laughs> all who are marked out of real life put their trust in god and they honor god's word by receiving that life these were the gentiles okay next line now and this message of salvation spread like all through sakwata let's continue and some of the jews convinced the most respected women and leading men of the town that their precious way of life was about to be destroyed they but to say but it's such culture uganda abavubuka te bachaulira abavuka renzi babibata This is not what we have done. This is the realization that a certain system is dying. Kemuba, kemuta bavuka, mwenda nyo, mvuka sobala cho kwekuma. Mura muwe, otatambula makuba mabi. That's we are preaching Christ. And people are, they are responding, they are walking out of things without don't. No. As they become Christ, these things just leave. As in they look back and say, eh, "When was the last time I put that word and they can't find it because Christ is growing in them every other day okay we're almost speaking now their process of life was about to way of life was about to be destroyed now the bible says alarmed they turned on Paul and Barnabas and forced them to leave same thing said to worry to them 
Some of you have the battles of where folk are saying we should leave Makere. Same thing. There's no reason. Same thing. Nothing else. This thing is bringing to distractions of certain governments men built. And we're destroying them all. I say we're destroying them all. Next line. Now, Paul and Barnabas struggled their shoulders and went on to the next town, Iconium, brimming with joy. And the Holy Spirit, two happy disciples. He wants us to continue. When they got to Iconium, they went as they always did, and to the meeting of the Jews, and gave their message. The message convinced both Jews and non-Jews, and not just a few either. Uh -huh, let's say, is there any other? Uh -huh. But the unbelieving Jews worked up as a whispering campaign against Paul and Barnabas, sowing mistrust and suspicion in the minds of people in the street. They have questionable teachings. Uh -huh. The two apostles were there a long time speaking freely, openly and confidently, as they presented the clear evidence of God's gifts. God collaborating their work with miracles and wonders. But then there was a split in public opinion. Some siding with the Jews, some with the apostles. You understand? Those were battles. One day, learning that both the Jews and non-Jews had been organized by their leaders to beat them up, they escaped as best as they could to the next towns, Liconium, Lystra, Derby, and the neighborhood. For them, you don't, you just we go. But they've left the damage. One of our own guys went over, they went somewhere to the east. They preached two sermons. The church split in two, two. The Baba go by you. I didn't start deadly. She didn't see into. She is deadly. She is deadly. A guy here has it once and he runs mad. It spreads like wildfire. By the way, me, I'm like that. I go where the flames are. I learned that from Lester Sumerall. Lester Sumerall taught, wherever the flames are, be. He runs in the flame where I would rather have fireworks and restore a few fanatics. You understand? Then be too cold to even be fanatical. They are gone. They are gone. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Trust me. If you understand the grace and you stay funny, you have not yet understood grace. When you understand grace, that's why Peter calls them babes. Little children, if you sin, you have an advocate. Because they're still babies. They're Nepios. But when you grow up, certain things work. Just like that. Hallelujah. Before the throne of... I love that song. I have a strong, perfect peace, a great high priest, whoever is a peace for me, whoever is a peace for me. again and say before the throne. Before the Come on, sing it. That's the proclamation. Uh, read it. A great high priest whose name is love. Whoever leaves a Peace. 
because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God that I still satisfy to look on him and pass on me. On him and pass on me. Behold him there, the reason life. Perfect, spotless righteousness. The great and gentle oh, I am. The King of glory and of oh, praise. The King of glory and When we deep still find With Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my Lord, we Christ my Savior and my Lord. My hope is built on the Jesus crown. Thy Sing it. I dare not trust. Oh, only these dreams and spring on Christ the soul. All oh, I work around these sinking sand. All oh, I work around these. I want women only to sing this verse without the gentleman. Wait. is only the gentleman. Only the gentleman. He's of his covenant, not his blood. Sir, so, so In the world, his blood, we know the right my soul. Gentlemen, you're wonderful. He can stay on Christ. I'm going sing it again. On Christ the soul, Christ the soul, the ground is seeking fast. Oh, the ground is seeking fast. 
Raise your hands. I speak in your life in the name of Jesus. If indeed he began a good work in you, he shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. This word is working in you, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. You are mightily waxing big. You are mightily waxing wide. You are expanding. You are increasing. You are delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. You are strengthened. You are uplifted. You are that light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend you not. You are walking with the lifter of your head. He is the comfort of your comfort. He is the pleaser of your pleasings. He is the desire of your desires. He shall walk in you. He shall increase in you. In your businesses, in your, in your fellowships, in your workings, in your family, wherever you shall be, you shall walk greater. Because the covenant you are under with is more than dazzling. It is super dazzling. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Make manifest.